Behind the grandstands at the Michigan International Speedway is a temporary shopping street for souvenirs, a row of trailers that travel from race to race. At one trailer, things are a little different. The proprietors are Bill and Skip Mears. And what they sell here, you can't get anywhere else, nor would you want to, because half the fun is shooting the breeze with the chance, mom and dad. A touch of their enthusiasm gives you a hint why their son is so special. We've never did this before, and so we just decided this was the time to do it. Well, <laughs> well we had a chance. Page family spent a little money at that stand today, picked up a t-shirt or two. Rick Mears running in third place, works around the track. Remember, he had a stop and go penalty that took him out of the lead of this race and put him back in the field behind first Mario and then Michael Andretti. Let's go to the pits. Bobby Rahal has his problems and Jack Arruda is there. Well, Paul, Bobby Rahal has been on pit road for approximately two and a half minutes right now. They have exchanged the battery here, as you can see on the car, and they have changed the spark box as well. So far, that has not cured the problem. They're trying to make some additional changes and hopefully refire the engine, take him back out into the hunt, but he is well down off the pace of the lead teams. Bad break from Ari Crane's Met team. Ray Hall was running in fourth place when he fell out. So all of the major changes have been right in the front of the field. We've been trying to stay with those. Good run, though, for Phil Kruger, making his first start of this year. He started 28th in this field of 29 and is currently running in ninth place. Ray Hall told me just before the start, he said, I don't believe this race will go to the swiftest. And I think he imagined himself perhaps taking it, but of course not now with that long stop. On board with Michael, another driver here that knows that you have to be so very careful. When Michael won this race a couple of years ago, he was totally fatigued. He got out of the car, but he could barely stand up. You look just to the right of his helmet there, that big black pad. Michael's put that in there because when they turn into the corners, he is thrust over against that pad with five Gs of force, or five times the weight of his head and helmet thrust against that pad. But Michael is a very different man now than he was two years ago when he won this race. We're looking at his face. He's a much more mature person in much better physical shape. He really understands the demands that racing makes upon him, and he has stepped up to those demands. Another thing, you know, that a lot of the guys wear helmet straps right there off the left side of their helmet, down under their shoulder and around. And the problem is, is your head with five Gs of force cuts off the blood circulation underneath. So that's the reason Mario's using that pad on the right-hand side. Huh? We look at Michael Andretti. He runs in second place. Michael and Mario teamed up, separated by about 15 seconds, are running at 215 miles an hour. And look at Rick Mears as he makes a charge on Ari Leyendijk. Not a battle for position, but Ari is back running up at speed. Ari is running in sixth place. Rick Mears is running in third. But the two cars were at the relative same speed a bit earlier. That gives you an idea that Rick Mears has definitely picked up the pace, and his car is running well. And keep in mind that Ari's had two strikes against him. He hit it under the green when a lot of the other guys got it pitched up under the yellow, which was just a little bit bad planning. And then also he got that stop and go penalty for running over his plastic bottle, of which there will obviously be arguments about that for a long time to come. This is a big day for Rick Mears because he has been discouraged, even depressed, I think, by the success of the Pat Patrick Emerson Fittipaldi team using exactly the same chassis as he had. Rick is known as a master of setting up chassis, and yet he admitted to us the other day that the Pat Patrick team, under the direction of Mo Nunn, the engineer there, had found something that the Penske team had not been able to find. And when he was out qualified for the poll here yesterday, uh, that only underlined the discomfiture that Rick has felt. All right, there is the leader, Mike Mario Andretti, and there's Michael, and there is Rick. So Rick is now closing down. A white car, right at the left edge of the screen, was uh, Michael as he went around. This is Rick as he comes across the stripe. There's uh, just a, a couple of seconds. There you see it once again. And Rick is definitely closing down on Michael Andretti. So the battle continues at the front of this field. Remember that while Rick qualified alongside of Emerson Fittipaldi, he was by far the fastest in the final practice session. 
Now the final practice session is almost always conducted with a full fuel load, so that may in fact have also been something to predict the performance that we are seeing from Rick Mears now. And also the race engines go in, the qualify engines out, Paul, so that's what you really see the race is gonna look like. Well, we've seen a lot of bumping back and forth this year. We take a look at the leader of the race, Mario Andretti. He had his problems a couple of weeks ago at Toronto. Tried to move around Teo Fabi and uh, slice the side of the car off. Michael Andretti was able to uh, get past that situation in which uh, Mario ran into the side of a parked car. Michael had a confrontation with Emerson Fittipaldi on the final lap, but won the race. Michael, we asked about the increasing number of bumps in racing. It's so competitive. It's very, very competitive. Um, you have guys running the same speed, and you're going down the last lap. You know, I mean, there's a lot on the line, and uh, you tend to take more chances because of that. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's racing. It's good racing. Um, I don't think, I don't think the drivers are willing to put each other in any danger. I think uh, we're most of, except with the exception of Indianapolis, which I think was more a problem of traffic being in front of Emerson and things like that. Uh, I think it's all been done in slower corners, things where, you know, guys pretty much know that, you know, they're not going to get hurt and you know, they're not putting the other guy in danger. And, uh, and it's also that uh, we're running so close together, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with inches and sometimes we cut a little too close. Well, Michael, like many of the other drivers, says that the confrontations, at least on the road courses, have not been that much of a problem. We're at the Michigan 500. 107 laps are now complete. 250 laps of scheduled distance. Of course, two miles around. I'm Paul Page with Sam Posey, Bobby Unser, Brian Hammonds, and Jack Aruth. Mario Andretti is the leader of the race as he's just flashed across the line with 108 laps complete. The battle on the circuit is the one we're watching as Michael Andretti tries to hold off a charging Rick Mears. On the start, Teo Fabi picked up the lead. Rick Mears right now moving down inside. We'll keep an eye on this battle. Then by lap three, Emerson Fittipaldi picked up the lead, and then the yellow came out as Rich Vogler and Steve Chassis got together. That brought out a caution period. On lap 44, Emerson Fittipaldi went into the pits, but missed his stop, had to go around. It was very costly for Fittipaldi, and has pushed him down to the 10th place that he now occupies. Then the leader of the race was Rick Mears, and he missed a pit stop as well. Coming out of the pits, got over the yellow line, and as a result, had a stop-and-go penalty. And as a result of all that movement, well, Mario Andretti and Michael Andretti started a battle that finally put Mario out in front with Michael in second place. And that brings us to the battle we watch at this moment as Michael Andretti tries to hold off that bright yellow car of Rick Mears. They're coming up behind Bobby Rahal, who was running fourth until he had a lengthy pit stop where they had to make some electronic changes on his car. What you're seeing between Michael and Rick, Paul, is, is you're seeing a Lola and a Penske chassis having a battle. The engines are both Chevrolet, they're both identical engines, and you're just seeing the difference between chassis. Now Rick has the famous, the yellow car there, the famous so-called Penske chassis has been so good this year. Now, the white car that Michael is in is the Lola chassis, and that'll show you how far they've come. They've been able to pretty much stay up with the Penske so far. Well, this battle for second place works its way around Raul Boisel, who is the fourth place car coming up into that fight right now as there goes Michael and there is Raul Boisel battling with Rick Mears. Boisel in fourth is nonetheless two laps back. So that gives you an idea of how the front of this field has been able to move away. Roberto Guerrero has not been spectacular today. He's never been up in the fight and they have just pushed his number 21 Alfa Romeo powered car to the garage area as Nick Panoro brings out the yellow flag once again we scan the track looking for the answer and it looks as if the caution is out for debris on the circuit Mario Andretti is the leader of the race Michael Andretti 
is in second place, followed by Rick Mears and then Raul Boisel and Teo Fabi. This is an ideal time for many of the pit stops to take place. Ari Leyendijk in sixth and under junior. Bill Kruger with a great run up in eighth. Then Emerson Fittipaldi and Derek Daly. This yellow really comes at an absolute perfect moment for the leaders of the race. We'll have to watch them and see if they decide to take advantage of this as the first of those comes in. Michael Andretti makes a stop and is out just that quick. Teo Fabi, who was running in sixth, made his move into position as we take a look down through the entire starting field of this, the Michigan 500. Those are all the cars in the 